he would like take my stuff and like pull my chair out from under me when I was getting ready to sit down and I'd fall down and stuff. It was like pretty much my worst year ever. I just felt terrible and I really wanted her to stop. School bullies, they wreak havoc on and off campus and their effect can leave us scarred. But what can your kids really do about bullies? We turn to our expert, Paul Coughlin, author of Raising Bullyproof Kids. He took us back to school to find answers. We all get picked on every once in a while in life and it's unfair, but that tends to be life. We're here to talk about people who do it over and over and over because studies show that that is where the misery is, that's where the pain is. I was bullied at school. I was uh, bullied at home as well by uh, uh, family members. So I know what it's like. I know what it's like to feel awful. This school is using the curriculum Paul designed to teach students how to understand bullies. They're like insecure about themselves. They just like to make people feel bad and make themselves look like they have a lot of power. And to shrink that person down and to boast that one person, the bully up. It's really arrogance and pride in a very young body. And what such people need is humility. That's why it's very important for bullies to apologize to their targets and mean it. And if they don't mean it, you shouldn't accept the apology. If you accept a non-real apology, it often gives the bully more power. These kids can even identify their classmates, who are prime targets for bullies. They just kind of stand in the back and just try to avoid other people. Yeah, no, that's, that's what we call non-assertive body language. When he's at lunch, kind of hunched over food, eating fast, like, okay, let's just hurry up and get out of here, maybe. You can invite that person to come over and eat with you, and I know what that means. I know what I'm saying. That when you invite someone over who's not all that popular sometimes, it could bring your popularity down. Do we really want to be popular with people who think it's okay to harm other people? I mean, that's really what we're worried about sometimes, isn't it? While you can't change a bully, Paul says, the best thing to do is grab some courage and grab a friend to help. It's really hard to be courageous by yourself. And so when you have someone else standing by your side, bullies don't like it when they are confronted. Me and him are telling him to stop because we heard that he didn't want to come to school anymore. And uh, we've gotten like a couple people to stop. Keep doing it. Defend that guy. And grab some other people too. The sooner we learn how to be courageous and do the right thing, the bigger our lives are going to become later in life. That's not me, that's Mother Teresa. Well, Paul Coughlin joins us now. He's the author of the book, Raising Bullyproof Kids. Paul, welcome back to the 700 Club. It is great to be with you. Thank you very much. You know, when we think about bullying, most of us think of some great big kid sort of yeah. beating up on a little kid. But the truth is, most bullying that goes on is not physical, right? That's right. It, most of, about 80% is verbal, not physical. And what we need to do with our kids is to train them how to respond to a verbal bullying. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Ignore it, walk away. But sometimes we need to show an appropriate use of, of uh, verbal force and power and strength with words like whatever, you know, if that's what you say. Words that are dismissive, mm -hmm. but they don't escalate the issue. Yeah. Is there an age bracket where this tends to happen more than any other? It does. Uh, bullying tends to spike between grades four through nine, and then after nine, it doesn't necessarily go away, but it does tend to diminish slightly. So those middle school years are tremendously tough for and our if kids. If you can survive them, I've often heard kids say what one of the young women in that piece said, you know, it was the worst year uh. of my life, but then they survived it and they wound up having good friends and a good life once they moved into like the next phase of maturity I guess. There is hope on the other side for many many kids but usually they they got help from someone there was some form of intervention either on behalf of a teacher uh, fellow students their parents kind of coached them through it one study showed that seven out of ten targets of serial bullying had difficulty forming adult relationships uh, particularly wow. difficulty with uh, anger management and especially resentment. Yeah. Do parents play a big role in a child being able to overcome all of this? Absolutely. We had a uh, we have three teenagers. One of them was bullied uh, when he was younger, and we had to coach him through it. The number one character trait that makes a kid a target of bullying is that they're non-assertive, so they don't appear confident or strong. Which would also make it hard for them to kind of stand up a and grab the bull by the horns. Absolutely. You know? So what they, they have to fake it till they make it. And so that's what we do with the protectors. We train kids how to appear strong. And I was working with one kid named Bobby at a Christian summer camp, 
and I showed him how to walk more assertively, and he said, you know, this feels weird. And I said, yes, <laughs> it is weird, but you'll get used to it. You have to fake it till you make yeah. it. How do parents know? You know, a lot of times kids are, are victimized like this, and, and they feel diminished enough by it that they're, they don't say anything to anybody about yeah. it. So how does a parent know if their child's experiencing You're this? right. They're full of uh, false shame and false guilt. Yes. Uh, you have, there, there are telltale signs where they used to enjoy school. They hate it now. Mm -hmm. they, they used to love to go to school. They don't want to go anymore. Torn clothing, uh, sudden outbursts of anger where it didn't exist before. Sometimes they'll, they'll uh, bully their own siblings when they didn't do that before either. Uh, drop in, in test scores. A general hatred and angst toward life. You know, it, I, I think that kids are so vulnerable in the age bracket that you talked about specifically. You know, that uh, we're all trying at that point to just kind of figure out who we are and what life is about. Yeah. This can be really damaging to kids. Tremendously damaging. I mean, we, you know, uh, we tend to think that, uh, what we'll say, things like, uh, that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger. We think we're quoting the Bible. That's but Frederick it might kill Nietzsche. Us. Yeah, <laughs> it, it might. You know what it is? It's abuse. It's yes. a unique form of abuse. Bullying is the superior use of power to intentionally harm another person mm -hmm. over a period of time. Statistically, it doesn't make us stronger. It can crack us very much like the piece earlier about the abuse of missionary kids. One of the things that I love that you write about is the significant place and part that bystanders can play in all of this because most kids are bullied publicly to build up the bullier. So talk about the role of the bystander and what others can do. The bystander has the most potential power in what we call the theater of bullying. There's four characters, the bully, the target, authority, but then there's the bystander. Mm -hmm. Studies show that if one kid and they don't even have to be popular. They don't even have to be big. In fact, uh, you just showed one of them. Her name was Melody from that school that I was at uh, in Tennessee. They don't even have to be big. If they just use assertive but nonviolent words, leave him alone, leave her alone, that's yeah. wrong. That incident of bullying can end 58% of the time within six to eight seconds. Once, what, what is missing uh, among bystanders, it's not so much that they, they know bullying's wrong. Mm -hmm. They feel that it is wrong. We just fail to act as if it's wrong, and courage is the source of the, or the nature of where action comes from. So what we do with the protectors is we train bystanders to be more courageous, and then they become courageous alongside standards of targets of serial bullying. We have just a, a couple minute, seconds left here, but can you, can you quickly give me the five things that you talk about that kids can do to protect themselves from bullying? Well, first of all, they need to fake it till they make it. They need to appear to be stronger uh, and more confident. They need to avoid what we call bullying hotspots. They also need to report what's happening to them. Mm -hmm. um, so for some reason, they think they're tattling. They're not. Yeah. They're reporting. It's just somebody a big who problem. has the authority to do something about it, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes. And then they need to learn to stand up for themselves, but especially also stand up for other people who are being bullied. Mm -hmm. And check out this book. It's called Raising Bully Proof Kids. Boy, we see so much about kids fighting publicly. It's going on YouTube, people being put down on Facebook. Get a hold of this. It's available in stores nationwide and it can make a difference. Thank you so much. It's great to have you with us again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.